good day to you. My name is Maria Kondzielska and you are watching Perlon Daily Culture and today we discovering secrets of playing organs. With us in the studio is Anna Przybysz, a musician organist. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you too. <laughs> and you are discovering in front of like to us and telling us what are what are uh, those secrets of playing organs because it's not an obvious instrument and it's quite complicated as well. So um, you tell you told us in the previous episode that it is uh, well. It depends how big organs are, how many songs. I mean, how many notes Stops, and yes. you can have, and that, that that you can kind of mimic other instruments with organs as well. Yes. So, but tell me if you have seven keyboards and how do you play on seven keyboards? It has to very long hands. Uh, no, you have to. Um, watch this photo from Atlanta. So it's like the first, it's here, second, and it's mm, up. up, yes, it's up this seven manual. So it's not hard to play, but you have to play in this position. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's not so it's challenging yes. then. <laughs> Long and way, also the legs. Yeah, of course. So is it, are there any limits, a limitation when it comes for, I mean, people who can play organs? Maybe it's no limits, but uh, it's easier to start playing organ when you are, for example, 10, 11 or 12 years old. So when I was at the school, uh, it was no possibility to play organ at the elementary school. So only from secondary school, because you are too, too small oh. to play organ. And it's not good for a body, so for children, yes, because you have to sit a few hours per day and it's really not healthy to organ unfortunately oh wow I would uh, accent okay so yeah. it's a challenge it's like a sport yeah. thing yeah. extreme sport extreme sport and so which organs are the best and uh, for you for example and uh, what uh, do you have your favorite equipment your favorite instrument yes. and where do you practice <laughs> as well so uh, it's hard to say which organ are the best because uh, you can play baroque music on baroque organ so it sounds the best so if you like to play for example Bach you would like to go to Germany for typical like Zilberman or Schnitger or Stellwagen organ and it sounds the best when you want to play romantic music you will use romantic organs like French romantic organs or German uh, romantic organs we've got also modern uh, organs or Italian are different Spanish are different American different England so every country has their own organ building culture and the sound it's totally different and it's created for playing totally different kind of music so it's hard to say we now have universal organ but you know if you can play everything on universal organ it will sound quite similar and we need to this extraordinary sound to to create an original sound of these pieces which we want to play and my beloved organ uh, are built by Wilhelm Zauer and um, it was a German late romantic organ builder and um, these instruments are near to Leipzig so when where I was studying so I had this opportunity to play this instrument and uh, I'm created also to play a more romantic Romantic music than Baroque or modern so I feel the best when I'm playing this kind of music so because of that Wilhelm Zauer is my best organ builder <laughs> <laughs> but uh, well how often do you have to practice and then the question is are you bound somehow to some places because well it, well a violinist can just take a violin yes. with them on a trip but when you're planning a trip are you like just you know checking out where are the organs <laughs> And where you will be able to practice. It's also very interesting because uh, we don't have an opportunity to play uh, many organ um, in the village when we are living because for example I'm practicing at home I've got electronic organ and uh, I can practice only technique so these technical aspects how to play the pieces but when I want to go for example to, to the to this Zauer organ I have to uh, have enough enough time to be able to to adapt to instruments so um, when I'm coming to for playing concert for example I need like 
two, three, maybe sometimes five hours of practicing to get to know old sounds and to get used to play with this mechanical, pneumatic or uh, electronic action. And it takes a lot of time to, to adapt for every instrument. And it's also interesting because you've got a different acoustic around. So if the acoustic is really huge, you have to play with shorter action. When acoustic is dry, you have to play in a different way. So in every church, we will play in a different way. So we have to be able to, to change our way of playing in a very short time. So. Wow, so it's like really adapting to an instrument yes, yeah. and you need time to do it. Yeah, a lot of time. So we don't have uh, enough time to do it, but we should have. <laughs> Not like pianists, so they've got 20 minutes of uh, acoustic rehearsal and that's on and they can play. So no, we, we need to have two or three hours of practicing before a concert. Before a concert. Yeah. So then it's, it's a lot of, I would say, um, physical exercise altogether yes. because you have to practice before the concert and the whole concert. Yeah. So a lot of playing, a lot of power with your muscles. Yeah. That sounds crazy. And, and how about even vacation? It's crazy you... when you are singing in the church, when we are church musicians, so legs, hands and singing together. So it's completely... <laughs> Well, then definitely. <laughs> organ people, like organ musicians, are orchestra people. Yeah. <laughs> so to you, the viewers of Bellanelli, when you will be hearing the next time the organs, think about the organist as someone who is really putting a lot of energy and a lot of power just in order to you to listen to those beautiful sounds and have the element, have the music during the mass. And it's always good to appreciate it. Stay with us for another episode because we'll dig into this topic. And thank you for watching Bell on Daily Culture.